What is there to say about Super Mario 64 that hasn't already been said? What could I possibly say about Super Mario 64, a video game that helped shape my childhood and inspire me to continue gaming well into my adulthood? Have you... ...for here, the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Wrong fandom! Wrong fandom! Wrong fandom! Ugh. Anyways... Super Mario 64 as a horror game? This is actually real. Is it a creepypasta? Well, what we have here is a first-hand account written about Super Mario 64 that, if you didn't know this spicy little tidbit, every cartridge, yes, every single cartridge of Super Mario 64, a game you know and love, is personalized. In this story, our protagonist starts off talking about how much they enjoy Super Mario 64 and that one day while browsing YouTube, they encountered an ad on YouTube. Totally unheard of. I don't know anybody who encounters ads. Do you like horror? What about in your video games? How about movies or shows? Nothing? No. no. Okay, I planned a sketch for this bit, but uh, just just work with me here. By leaving a comment and subscribing to my channel, you single-handedly, I means you, you right there watching this, you're looking at me in the eyes, you single-handedly are supporting a man on the internet. What? Did you expect me to say more? Oh, have a happy Halloween. I hope you have a fun evening. That's really about it. Yeah. They go on to talk about them having a literal nostalgia overload. I know, I know, this oh. uh, this is a nostalgia overload. <laughs> so, they contact the seller. The page is really weird though, not like something you'd expect from a video game seller with an ad on YouTube. Then, something, well, something kind of strange happened. The seller only wanted the buyers to mail $10 in an envelope. Especially with the recentness of the post, this was weird. Why wouldn't you want to use PayPal, Cash App? Hell, you could even use Venmo. But snail mail? Odd. That's odd. Trying to access the website was peculiar, to say the least, after the purchase. They got the game, sure, but they encountered some... Well, we we can just say they encountered some, some issues with the copy, tried to get some help, but they couldn't actually access the site anymore. They'd even written down the URL and still nada, nothing. There was there was absolutely nothing there. They were starting to feel ripped off, and then one day they received the package. It contained a mint condition copy of Super Mario 64, or at least at first glance, it looked like a mint condition copy. They started to look over the cartridge and noticed that the official Nintendo seal on the game was peeled off, and in place was a piece of tape that just said Mario on it. They were pissed. Granted, they only lost $10, but still the principal, the principal of the matter, the dude shysted them. He came along and went, hey, mint condition Super Mario, right here, baby. Yeah, you wanted 10 bucks, okay. But as long as the game played, not that huge of a deal. So they busted out their old N64, popped the cartridge in. It worked flawlessly. Time to start pulling on our old boy Mario's face. I don't know about you guys, but every time I would mess with Mario's face, I'd make his mustache into like sunglasses and I'd make his nose come down and make him just kind of like, like kind of, I, I don't know how to say, like gape his mouth with his one tooth poking out. And for me, it just looked like cool, badass baby Mario. I don't know, maybe I'm the weird one. If you guys have done anything like that, drop something in the comments. Let me know if you've, uh, what kind of weird shit you did with the, uh, Mario 64, like, intro, goofy, googly, warped face page. But our protagonist thought about stretching Mario's ears into elvish status, and when they began to move to the second ear, the game started to freak out and distort Mario's ears, and started twisting his whole face and contorting him all over the place, and then a loud static pierced through, like the sharpest knife through butter just right in their ears and so you know they they freak out they don't know what's going on so they slam the system off that shit off bye which is what i would do 
If I started playing a game and Mario started talking in demonic voices and twirling around and shit, I'd be like, yeah, no, I'm done, bye. I hit my fucking toe. Needless to say, it was all an incredibly overwhelming experience. Like if you're tripping and someone decides to blast Pierce the Veil at full volume. Then they started being able to hear like a quiet whispering in Japanese, like droning, sobbing. And our character shuts the console off, decides once more, they're gonna try booting it up. They're gonna see if maybe it was just a glitch, but they just skipped the entire Mario warp puzzle play game. I don't know what they had. What did they actually call it? I don't know. But they skipped it and just decided to start the game. So our guy is going through the beginning stuff within Mario 64, but it doesn't have Peach's initial monologue and it doesn't even start off with in the field outside of Peach's castle. It just dropped them right into the castle. The only accessible door is to bob on Battlefield and it's completely silent. Not like when your audio settings are messed up, but like deafeningly silent, except for Mario's footsteps, the, the loud pitter patter when Mario would walk around, run around. The bob on Battlefield portrait was also just a blank canvas, like almost like the texture just didn't load in. Almost like the, the copy when you would tilt a 64 cartridge, how some of the graphics would kind of have graphical issues, like that. They tried to convince themselves that it was just a glitch, but as they continued playing, it became more and more difficult to delude themselves for much longer. Bro, when they jumped into the canvas, it quickly shifted to the lethal Lava Lands picture, the one with the evil smiling fireball, instead of the first mission being Big bob on the Summit, it was just titled Turn Back. And for some reason, they decided to press A. Okay, buddy, what the fuck drove you to press A? I would have snatched the game out of my console and hucked that shit into the wall as hard as I fucking could. I don't need demons in my life, no sir. Surprisingly, everything was pretty normal. The game played the same, the music, and there were enemies and NPCs to interact with. And then he saw Luigi, which is weird because, as you know, Luigi is not in the game. Contrary to popular belief, he's, he's not. He's not in it. But that's when things went from weird to downright traumatizing. Our protagonist decided to get closer to Luigi and then he just darted. So he gave chase. Each coin collected resulted in the music dropping in pitch and becoming slower and less audible. When our boy grabbed the fifth coin though, the music completely stopped and all the enemies just decided to lay down and pretend to be dead. which. You know, isn't exactly normal, especially in Mario 64. Everything usually just kind of disappears when they die, but they continue to chase Luigi. Up until they got to the top of the summit, where there was a dilapidated old cottage that we'd have to assume Luigi went into because he's not around here. So in they go. And what they see is Luigi hanged in the cottage. They report that Mario then falls to his knees and sobs for minutes on end. I'll tell you what, this is exactly what Super Mario 64 needed. More sewer slide. It's all over message boards and blogs how people wish Luigi would neck himself after the year of Luigi and all. I'd buy way more Mario games if they were rated M for Mario watches his brother Hank. Our person though, thoroughly shaken up by what they just saw, watches as Mario just kind of slumps out of the painting that just changed to a picture of Luigi doing that. But the room was different. It became a small hallway with another picture on the wall adjacent to our character and it terrifies our protagonist because the picture is of them and their family. But it was a recent photo. So recent in fact, it was a photo taken the weekend prior. So it's just, yeah, just a little alarming. Then finally, finally, they did the smart thing and they shut the console off, which I don't know why they wouldn't have done it immediately upon having even the first thing happen. Mario flipping out and shit, that's that cartridge is against the wall into about 50,000 pieces. I don't know about you, but that's me. I like horror and all, but when it starts to become real and I feel like the grudge girl or the ring girl is gonna come and get me, yeah. that no thank you. So they shut the console off. 
but the console wouldn't shut off. Okay, you have to run. Nintendo has finally figured out where you are and your bootleg copy of Super Mario 64. You need to get out of there, get the fuck gone, throw everything away, set it on fire, it, 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 immolate your entire house because Nintendo is about to take you to the Bad Boys Club for 25 years. You need to get out now. Anyways, system was unplugged, but the game still played. They were even able to control Mario, so it wasn't just like it was a, a splash screen that was frozen. They were able to continue playing the game. So, at this point, since there's no sight of the game shutting off, they can continue to play. Really stupid move in my opinion, but whatever. They jumped into the painting of their family and were greeted by a mission titled Run, Don't Walk. They spawned into a flooded hallway and as they looked back, they saw a black void swallowing up everything in its path. They began to jump platform to platform and they continued to play for what felt like hours, but eventually the void caught up to them. They could do nothing as they just watched Mario get engulfed by darkness without so much as a yell. Then Mario, as normal, gets ejected from the painting. We lost the life. The room had changed again though. Toads started disappearing. It seemed darker. The painting of him and his family changed as well. They all looked kind of like decomposing corpses. Too well done to be a shoddy Photoshop job. Back into the painting they go. I'm right here was the only mission there to greet them. The room was empty, except for a piano in the corner. I knew what that meant. I was stuck in there with the mad piano. I approached it and it started chasing me as always. There was no way to damage it, so I had no choice but to let Mario take damage. When he lost all his health, the usual death animation didn't happen. Mario just got mauled by the piano. He fell as his blood and guts spilled on the floor and the camera panned to a top-down view of his corpse. A distorted version of the merry-go-round music from Big Boo's Haunt played as the screen slowly transitioned from the in-game shot to a photorealistic sketch of Mario's dead body in the same view as the shot. It was very unsettling. I was crying softly as I gazed upon the image. The family portrait then decomposed even more. The camera then zoomed into the painting and they're given a shot of the outside of Peach's castle as it crumbles in ruin. Fields of green had become vicious burning fields of ember threatening to consume all that attempt to stand against it. The sky blackened as Bowser's laugh continues incessantly on loop. Children mockingly stating, you can't save her. Then a close-up of Peach's face and a loud screech is all heard. Her mouth hangs slack and agape, her eyes empty black voids tempting you to stare deeply. But yet again, and with Mario's last life, they jump into the painting. No mission title, no music, just a blank space to select. Mario lands on a small island with a sign that says, Dive. As they enter the water, there were no fish. Everything was incredibly dark. The only thing able to be made out was Mario. So they began to swim down. 10 minutes, they swam without needing to get air. Our protagonist decided to go back to the surface of the water and with barely enough time to turn around, Unagi the eel swallowed Mario whole. No fanfare, no game over, distortion, just silence. The family photo was just bare bones skeletons now. Turning off the console and back on, our character tries to load their save, but it just loads to their family portrait. They try three times before giving up. They wanted to stop, desperately wanted to walk away, but they couldn't. So upon selecting a different save file, they're greeted with another skeletal portrait, just not of their family. Ooh. It's Halloween, baby. And you know what that means. Candy, and for some of my adult viewers, a couple extra drinky drinks for when the kitties go to bed. But it's spooky season, so when you go out tonight, please be safe, have a good time, let people know where you are, 
And again, always remember, have a good time. Have an awesome time, it's Halloween. But if you liked the video, hit that sub button. And if you haven't already, leave a like. So the YouTube algorithm will actually pay me money. That'll be nice. Did you know about the rumors surrounding Mario 64? And if you did slash didn't, why don't you let me know in the comments? It's time for me to go get dressed up. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Bye.